Hi everyone. Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar. You might already know me from previous webinars, but in case you don't, my name is Tammy Ben David and I'll be your host for today. The topic we'll be discussing today is global API regulation in 2023 and what it means for you. Having an API supplier with a solid and experienced regulatory affairs team is crucial for drug product manufacturers. If you want to be selling lots of products across multiple markets, you, together with your supplier, must be on top of the changing and very specific regulations in each country. In this webinar, we'll be giving a 360 degrees overview of current and changing regulations across the world. Experts from five markets, LATAM, the US, EU, China and Japan, will be sharing their insights about what to be looking for in 2023 and beyond. So now just to give a quick agenda of our webinar today, the webinar will be about 45 minutes long. In the first half, you'll learn what's new in the LATAM market, specifically in Brazil and Mexico, DMF relevant enhancements under the Generic Drug User Fees Act in the US, what the different authorization procedures in the EU mean for you, what makes China's emerging market unique in terms of regulation? And lastly, how Teva API's local dedicated team in Japan helps customers navigate this challenging market. After this, we're going to be opening up the floor for questions. So please, if you have any questions while our speakers are talking, please pop them into the chat box on your screen where you see two little speech bubbles and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can at the end. Now, just to give a short introduction before we start, um, just an intro about the way our regulatory team is structured. Teva API's global organizational structure is of course built to best support customers' needs no matter which markets they're targeting. The team is based on fields of activity and geography of the manufacturing sites. The new products team is located in Teva's head offices in Israel. They focus on supporting R&D and first submissions in main markets for all Teva API R&D products, no matter where developed. RA local teams in each manufacturing location support commercial products, lifecycle management, post approval changes, and much more. The teams in China, Japan, and Brazil support local registration, and most importantly, represent Teva API directly in front of the authorities, namely China FDA, PMDA, and Anvisa. So now we're going to deep dive into our markets, starting with LATAM. Rodrigo, over to you. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, I'll be talking to you today about uh, LATAM market. My name is Rodrigo Silva. I work with uh, regulatory affairs matters related to the LATAM region, uh, mainly focused in uh, Mexico and Brazil. And uh, the idea here is to give you uh, highlights of what is uh, most important in each of uh, the two markets. Uh, so, as I said, uh, Brazil and Mexico. Uh, we are going to be starting with uh, uh, Mexico. Uh, still in Mexico, the main hurdle uh, for you to get a registration uh, is to uh, uh, surpass the need of uh, the inspection uh, equivalence or uh, the inspection report from Copy Prize with a satisfactory result. Uh, Mexican regulation uh, prescribes a series of uh, uh, agencies uh, across the world that they recognize uh, as equivalent to uh, Copy Prize inspection. And uh, it is important uh, for you to shorten timelines that you have the uh, inspection report with satisfactory results from one of these authorities, or else you are going to need to apply for uh, an on-site inspection by Coffee Prince. Uh, the manufacturing sites that we work, uh, as you can see in this next slide, uh, they are covered uh, at least from one of the authorities listed in Mexican regulation. Uh, so, for example, our sites in Italy, they are covered by uh, EMA and FDA uh, inspection reports, uh, which we can uh, provide in the, uh, with Mexican authority in order to uh, fulfill the need for the inspection report. Uh, 
so the, you can shorten the timelines for obtaining a registration in Mexico. So uh, that's mainly it for Mexico. And now we switch over to Brazil. Uh, as some of you may have heard, uh, since uh, August 1st, 2023, uh, the new regulation uh, became effective uh, in full force uh, with the end of the grace period. Uh, and it was related to CADIFA. Uh, CADIFA is a visa's equivalent uh, to a CEP. So if you want uh, to register a new product in Brazil, uh, your API uh, are go is going to need a CADIFA valid in order to uh get the registration for the finished dosage uh and since uh, august 1st 2023 uh, we have uh, been working with uh, several of our customers uh with all the support that they need locally in order to uh successfully obtain kadifa Another highlight from uh, the current uh, regulatory landscape in Brazil is related to RDC 7050 uh, which is related to uh, the regulatory reliance program from Visa. So similarly to what we have just talked about Mexico, uh, Visa has started a pilot program to accept and recognize uh, satisfactory uh, inspection report uh, from other authorities. Uh, and they have a list of authorities uh, that they recognize that is listed uh, in the regulation. And uh, also, uh, they uh, are expecting to finalize this pilot program in March 31st, 2024. But the expectation of the pharmaceutical sector is that Visa will instate this as a permanent program uh, because they can uh, save time. And also, they uh, ha don't have the main power to cover uh, all the portfolio of API of all API suppliers. Uh, then they needed to do something as a recognition from other authorities in order to uh, fulfill the, the need of the inspection report that now CADIFA requires. Uh, a third point related to uh, Brazilian regulation is uh, Guide 50 in its third version. Uh, guide 50 is uh, the guide for nitrosamines uh, from Unvisa. Uh, it's based on uh, FDA guidelines and uh, EMA guidelines, uh, and now in this third version, the main focus was uh, to include additional 16 uh, nitrosamines with uh, uh, the levels that Visa expects uh, API suppliers and finished dosage manufacturers to uh, comply with. Uh, so it gives a more granular understanding of what is expected when applying for a uh, new drug uh, application. In order to support our customers, uh, we have been supporting uh, in post-approval changes. Uh, when these post-approval changes are not uh, yet under CADIFA, uh, our customers has ha have to observe the uh, what is prescribed in RDC 36.1, uh, which lists the scenarios where you are going to submit which categories uh, and also uh, which type of uh, documents you are going to need to submit. Uh, for CADIFA, when you have already CADIFA, the post-approval changes are done by the API supplier. And uh, we prepare the special uh, material uh, in the uh, website. If you uh, search in Google for uh, CADIFA Tava API, you are going to find uh, our uh, online tool uh, in order to consult uh, and check which conditions and documents uh, are uh, required for a, a post kazifa change. Uh, but these we have been working uh, together uh, with uh, the uh, RE sites, uh, the, the site RE people that we just talked about. And uh, the idea is uh, to uh, support our customers uh, with these materials. And also uh, it's important to highlight here the changes uh, are and is inspired by the variations guideline from uh, ADQM. And this is even more uh, lenient than ADQM and EMA uh, in the sense uh, that whenever you have uh, a change uh, in which the final specification does not change in any uh, part of the, the list of specifications, then Visa uh, will uh, consider it as immediate implementation 
uh, for uh, our customers. Uh, so it's uh, less strict than uh, what is uh, done currently uh, in Europe, uh, for example, before EMA. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I finalize and now hand over to uh, my colleague, Anna. So hello to all. Uh, my name is Anna Bohanek and I'm Associate Director of, Re of Regulatory Affairs in Teva API. And today I will talk about the current US uh, regulatory highlights. Um, so in US, uh, generic, drug is generic drugs are regulated uh, by the Generic Drug User Fee Act, so-called GDUFA, which is actually in force uh, from 2012, but was now reauthorized on September 22 as GDUFA 3. And the provisions from GDUFA 3 uh, are in force from fiscal years 20 through 27. Uh, Teva as the company also actively participated in these GDUFA 3 discussions. Um, in general, review timelines for end the supplement and amendment are unchanged from GDUFA 2. Um, however, today I will talk more about the drug master file relevant enhancements under the GDUFA 3. And those are two main points. Uh, first one is assessment of DMF solicited off cycle amendments. And the second one, DMF, DMF review prior to end the submission. So first update is related to assessment of DMF solicited off cycle amendments, which are actual response to the de deficiency letters. And before under the GDUFA 1 and 2, actually they were not picked up for, for assessment by the FDA when there is no open review cycle for an associated ENDA. Now the changes that such and solicited DMF amendments will be assessed by FDA immediately upon received, even there is no open review cycle for an ENDA. In such assessment, priority will be given to the DMF amendments which are related to ENDAS for which DMF amendment may result in approval. Uh, so you here you can visually see the comparison of the process before and now under the GDUFA 3. Uh, so as I mentioned before, once the response to DMF deficiency letter uh, is submitted, it is not reviewed by the FDA immediately, but only once uh, the end a complete response letter is also submitted and GDUFA clock reopened. Now uh, such responses to DMF deficiencies will be uh, immediately triaged and assigned for review, uh, which actually gives a better utilization of this so-called off-cycle time and more time for FDA for the assessment and also for the DMF holder more time to address any follow-up information requests. Uh, second main update within the GDUFA 3 is the option of DMF review prior to end the submission. And actually the criteria uh, for DMF review prior to end the submission is that one of the following conditions are met. Uh, that uh, this is the drug for which all patents and exclusivities uh, will expire with, with, within 12 months after the end of submission date. That submission is for the product with maximum three approved drug products and with no blocking patents or exclusivities. That submission is for a drug product that could help mitigate or resolve drug shortage or could help address a public health emergency or the submission is for a drug product for which there is only one approved drug product listed in the FDA Orange Book and this drug product is approved uh, via an ANDA application. Uh, so here is uh, visually shown the timeline Gantt of the comparison of the DMF standard review and the DMF prior assessment review. Uh, so in standard review, actually the DMF is submitted to the FDA, preferably six months before end of submission. At that time, DMF is paid to the FDA and the FDA is doing the completeness assessment decision. However, DMF scientific review does not start. Uh, it only starts once the end of filing decision is made. And this is usually around month two after the end of receipt. And you can see here in the timeline Gantt, it gives uh, quite a short time for DMF holder to address uh, those deficiencies, about 30 days, in order to have enough time for the second cycle DMF review and uh, all to be within the first uh, end review cycle. Um, so now this update in the DMF prior assessment option, uh, DMF is also submitted six months uh, before end of submission to the FDA. Uh, fee is paid and this prior assessment request is submitted to the FDA by the DMF holder. 
uh, FDA is checking this request. If it is granted, uh, DMF scientific review starts basically immediately. And this gives an option uh, for the DMF to either be found adequate or to receive deficiency letter even before and the submission. And this is very important because uh, there is, uh, in this way, there is more time for the DMF holder to potentially uh, respond to any follow-up information uh, request and all within the uh, first and the review cycle. Uh, so, which DMFs are eligible for this option of review prior to under submission? Well, not all. Uh, only the one that have not yet been assessed by the FDA. And this assessment, as I mentioned, must be requested uh, by the DMF holder at least, at least six months prior to the planned submission date of ENDA. And the uh, conditions are that this DMF will be referenced by an ENDA, which can be original ENDA, ENDA amendment, ENDA amendment seeking approval for ENDA that was previously tentatively approved, or prior approval supplement to add a new API source. Uh, what we need to provide to FDA is the cover letter, letter of authorization supporting a pre-assigned ENDA, uh, RLD reference from the orange book, uh, documentation of the MF holder fee payment, and justifications from the conditions. Uh, and then the end, I will say a few words about the Teva uh, API uh, key differentiators uh, in this process, DMF process at FDA. Uh, so during the new DMF preparation, actually target is to have the right the first uh, time quality DMF. Uh, it means the scientific approach is applied in building the key areas of the file. Uh, it also means that we closely monitored FDA questions and trends in order to implement additional studies during the development phase of the drug substance. We are also focused on the DMF complete response letter, uh, which we actually see that are mainly focused on the potential Im impurities. So this is also the focus in, in the Teva API uh, DMFs. Uh, DMF submission, well, actually, this is the critical milestone, which is uh, done together with the customer in close co collaboration with the customer. At that time, usually uh, also the relevant documentation and information are exchanged. And in Teva API, there is also a notification procedure in place, which assures that all relevant customers will be informed about any updates in the DMF. And in addition to the generic drug uh, uh, support, uh, we are also supporting the innovative drugs. So our APIs are used and we are supporting submission of IND, NDA. And also what we see is lots of complex products using, using our old, old API molecules. Uh, so this is it for US. Thank you for the attention and handing over to Tsofit. Hi. Thank you, Anna. Uh, my name is Tsofit Kehat. Uh, I'm from New Products Team and uh, I will speak today about EU market. So a uh, main change that is expected in Europe market is the pharma legislation revision, which the European Commission uh, published a draft revision of the EU general legislation on medicines for human use to ensure future proof and crisis resistance medicine uh, regulatory systems. Uh, this will be relevant for the entire pharmaceutical industry and specifically for uh, API manufacturer uh, the meaning is, is that it's going to be a centralized review for ASMF, which is similar to SEP procedure, but not connected to a European pharmacopoeia. This is in order to have more efficient process for ASMF review and change management. So actually this is a, a, a procedure which is parallel to SEP, but uh, when there is no uh, EP monograph. So here uh, you can see a short comparison of the current regulation that we have today and the revision. Uh, so today the submission uh, can be done for multiple authorities for many EU countries in parallel when the registration revision uh, will be as one centralized review for SMF, which will be done only by one agency, which will be probably EMA. In current regulation, the product can be submitted in a, nas a national procedure, which is one country at a time, or, num or in a number of countries uh, simultaneously. It can be DCP or work sharing procedure. Uh, the applicant can submit a few procedures in parallel for the same products, and this can make 
uh, the situation more complex in current regulation, where in the new revision, it's going to be one centralized procedure and one agency availability of medicine in all EU countries at the same time at once. Challenges in current regulation is uh, that we have multiple procedures in parallel uh, by different pharma companies. We must maintain one ASMF version and uh, no changes are allowed uh, to submit during review. In the new uh, regulation, the me medicines available are equally and will be at once in all EU countries, and this may cause uh, the main chain because continuous supply to all European Union states for long period to prevent shortages can be a challenge in this uh, situation. Uh, to summarize the process in general, so uh, active uh, substance certificate can be granted by the, agent, by the agency, by EMA, even if it's not already covered by the EP monograph. Applications should be submitted to the agency. Uh, the agency will examine and in case of positive outcome, uh, shall grant the certificate. Uh, the holder of the certificate can be also, should be the manufacturer. Uh, the holder need to keep DMF up to date and submit changes and uh, also the holder shall undergo inspection if requested by the agency. Okay, so okay. purposes and goals. So main purpose in the new regulation is to have more efficient process for ASMF review and change management, uh, more transparency and clarity of the approval process, a faster approval process if today the average for getting an approval is 400 days in the new regulation, the plan is to uh, receive the approval in within 180 days. And of course, uh, electronic submission for all filing. The main goals is to provide faster and equal accessibility of medicine into the market to all European Union states at once, to avoid the shortage in the market, and to lower the price for public. Uh, the second uh, topic uh, I will discuss today is uh, uh, the CEP Certificate of Suitability, which is granted by the EDQM. Uh, so, as you can see on the right uh, side on the top, uh, TAPI, TEV IPI, holds today 178 SEPs. The SEP confirms that an API is suitably controlled according to the monograph of the European Pharmacopoeia. It can only be submitted for product for which official public pharmacopoeia monograph is available. Main advantage, we have to centralized assessment, which is done by expert from EDQM, uh, the approval of the DMF in case customers submit with us, so no further comments are expected from other countries, and recognition by different countries, such as Canada, Australia, Taiwan, and uh, many more around the world. Okay, so this is uh, the step two, step of the future. Uh, which uh, actually it was uh, the SEP of the future is focused on uh, less administrative information on the SEP in order to avoid unnecessary variation and our team is part of the industry working group. Uh, so SEP hasn't changed uh, since it was created in the 1992. In 2020 a public survey focusing on the need was distributed to the industry and in mid-2022, there was a, a mock-up SEP was created. In September the same year, consultation process was presented to the stakeholders uh, at uh, three different workshops. One was with the EP authorities, the second one for non-EP authorities that accept SEP, and third one uh, for the industry stakeholders. In November 2022, there was, were final discussions and approval of all proposals. And in April 23, a guidance uh, was published to the public with the new requirements of the SEP2. 
In May 2023, EDQM webinar presented the final look. And next month in September this year, we expect uh, the final the implementation. So the working areas that was, were discussed during the consultation of the SEP2 uh, was mainly the review of information reported on the SEP, uh, implement uh, digitally signed electronic SEP, update of EDQM database information and online public database, uh, faster information sharing between SEP holder and drug product manufacturers, uh, and discussions to disclose more information on SEPs and uh, to reduce the SEP revision by avoiding administrative which do not impact the quality of the API. Main goals were uh, to meet the needs of the SEP holders, drug product manufacturers and regulatory agencies, uh, easier registration activities and increase the acceptance of SEP, uh, to reduce the number of variation, uh, increasing transparency and adding control related substance. And the, fa the final template of the SEP, uh, so main changes are that it remains a document but with electronic signature. It can be downloaded as PDF and uh, no paper copy will, will be delivered from now on from EDQM. So, but it can be printed by SEP holders to end to share with the customer. So thank you all. And now I will hand over to my colleague Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. This is Jay Chen from China. Um, I'm talking to you from Beijing. OK. Uh, China, China. So why is China? So China is positioned as one of the largest pharmacopoeia markets in the world justified by the size of its market and its population. Uh, we can see from the table, the population, the GDP, and also the healthcare spend, and the whole market value in 2021. This is why. But uh, China uh, also is the, one of the special markets considered to have very specific requirements in several areas. And uh, which are not fully aligned with EU and US markets. And there are very special, unique requirements that we should uh, fulfill in this market. So talking about the key trends in the uh, China NMPA, this is the China FDA, the regulation is to improve the generic drugs quality uh, focused on the consistency evaluation. This is uh, uh, to show the equivalence of the generic drugs to the innovator. Also, at the meantime, there is a national level of GPO implemented to lower the drug price. So the government wants to have better quality product with lower price. Uh, from the quality aspect, there's a local US FDA office aiding the local manufacturers to meet the U.S. standards. And uh, for Teva, we have uh, several key products uh, commercialed in China, uh, which are Mupirocin, Cisatacurium, etc. And uh, from these uh, products, I'm very proud to say that Zetimib and uh, Fluvastatin is submitted and approved uh, in my hand. So very thankful to my team and uh, all the sites. Uh, now, when we are talking about authority, we are saying the NMPA, which is the National Medical Product Administration. This is the China's FDA. And uh, as an RA, I mainly talk to the Center for Drug Evaluation, uh, which is CDE, we call it. There is a Chinese sales office in China uh, based in Beijing. And uh, there are three person in that department. And there are three RAs uh, in China, RA uh, team. And uh, we, we are working under our global RA team. And uh, in China, we have to use local agents. 
So most of the cases we are using our Tama Shanghai entity, and but sometimes we're using the external agent agent to do some submissions. For the submission in China, we all always use two options. Option one is to submit the DMF with our code, which means it is a independent DMF, uh, most uh, for the local customers. And option two is to submit the DMF in the FDF file. So this means we don't have a code. Uh, we don't have an independent DMF. Uh, talking about the special requirements in China, uh, in general, the APIs in China are managed as a medicine, not a intermediate. So every importation to China needs a certain approval, including the R&D purpose. So only expiry date is accepted for API, no retest date for China. And uh, any changes or modifications that can impact the quality of the API, like primary packages and uh, manufacturing process, etc., must be reported to the NMPA for approval. And uh, for the supplier, only one can be submitted within the ender for approval. Any alternative source can only be added after the approval is approved. And also for each molecule manufactured at one site, there can be only one DMF. Uh, there are several regulatory challenges in China too. The first is we already mentioned there are specific market requirements and also there are different communication channels and language because from the site we get uh, only the English DMF but to submit to the authority we need to submit the English version and the Chinese version side by side and uh, also the regulatory considerations and the barriers is different in China. Uh, we have to combine the US, EU and uh, sometimes Japanese uh, specification to form and finalize a last version specification for China's API. And uh, also we are going through the digital promotion. Several years ago, the authority accept only paper version. And now we're using a disk with all the files in. And uh, later on, we will come to the uh, ECTD version. The last but uh, not the least is the responsiveness. Uh, this means in the deficiency letter we get, there is a solid due date in that letter. We cannot be late by that date. Uh, if we are late, uh, the DMF is killed for sure. Uh, their API registration process is, uh, the whole procedure is similar from other countries. Uh, we do the submission, we get a deficiency letter, we reply and we get approval or disapproval. This is uh, similar, but uh, for China, there are specific uh, uh, things that we need to do. First is we need to submit annual, rep annual reports every year, but at the meantime, there is a five years expiry after approved. This is different from other countries. And uh, the API registration needs to be available before the end uh, application. This is similar, but uh, this code can be a marketing tool because it is published in the CDE website and everyone in the industry can search for it and find. Our customer can import the R&D quality with this registration code too. For the uh, DMF approved in China, we have already 26. Uh, and uh, 12 is under review and uh, 5 in our work plan. Uh, now I want to talk about some uh, submission uh, in 8 steps. The first is to prepare the DMF. Uh, usually we will get a EU or US based uh, DMF according to China recommendations and we will cooperate with our site to collect every uh, documents that we have, that we need. And then we will uh, perform the translation and the review of the whole DMF. 
and uh, the next step is to do the actual submission. After the submission, the authority will perform a complete needs assessment. And if we passed it, we will get a uh, published in the website. And also we will receive the test and uh, also the fee notice from authority. So in step five, we have to provide the samples and the standards that needed for the whole procedure of the testing and the validation for all the test method. The step six is to follow up and review the answer, the deficiency letter. And the step seven is to uh, connect with the authority and we will finalize the API monograph based on the DMF, the response, and the other countries' pharmacopoeia combining together. And then the last step, after we finalize our monograph, we will receive our approval for both our API and the related FDF from our customer. Uh, when we mentioned the admin documents that in module one, there are several special requirements for China. The first three is GMP, FSC, and the manufacturing license. These three uh, needs to be notarization and uh, uh, legalization from China Embassy. So this is very time consuming for the sites, especially from the European countries. So this is three is the first task that when we set to submit a uh, one DMF, then well, we will have the agent appointment letter. And uh, when we want to change the agent, we need to do the termination to the old one. The six is the address statement. This is when their address in the certificates is a little bit different. We need to issue this statement to explain to the authority in advance. The seventh is the patent statement that uh, we use. We need to have a China format of statement. No changes are permitted. The eighth is a registration form is for the DMF. And nine is the testing material. Uh, this is when we submit the material to authority for the uh, registration testing. A lot of documents uh, in the customs from the shipping uh, have to submit it to the authority. And uh, the last one is the LOA. This is uh, usually we will submit to the authority and after we get approval, more and more customer will come to us and we will issue them the new LOA and the, the commercial business starts. This is my part. Now, handing over to my colleague and my boss, Mariana. Hi, thank you, Jay. Thank you. My name is uh, Mariana Kishinevsky and I work in the Teva API uh, array department uh, responsible for international markets. China, Japan, and Brazil. I'm located in in Israel, and we'll talk a bit about uh, Japan regulatory highlights. Um, so the uh, regulatory authority in Japan is called PMDA, Pharmaceutical and Medical Device Agency, which is part of the Ministry of Health. What is uh, a very uh, important in uh, Japan to know is that foreign manufacturers uh, implying in for uh, master file registration has to appoint an uh, in-country caretaker. This in-country caretaker is a local uh, company, a local agent that uh, lives in Japan and uh, uh, they will undertake every administrative and clerical work for the registration the foreign manufacturers cannot apply directly to PMDA. So the in-country caretaker has the responsibility to communicate with PMDA directly in place of this foreign manufacturer for the registration, for the life cycling management, and uh, for communication with the marketing authorization applicant. Um, when uh, submitting in Japan, uh, 
the drug master file uh, applicant should prepare uh, application form in Japanese and this application form description has to be an aligned with the master batch records and should be supported by the process validation and qualification. Uh, consistency between application form and uh, the side documents are verified during GMP inspections. Uh, specifications for Japan should be aligned with the J Japanese pharmacopoeia monograph, if available, and the specification has to be adopted. Uh, if uh, in-house EP or USP analytical methods are used for the release in Japan, a uh, full method validation report should be presented. And in case instability, uh, the specifications are different according to EP or USP, a cross-validation of suitability set uh, tests should also be uh, performed. Uh, in During submission of a drug master file in Japan, uh, we have to present nine batch analysis, which can be either three batches tested in triplicates or nine different batches. And uh, we also have to perform solubility testing in the solvents used uh, in uh, in the release monograph, in the, during the release of the of the drug must, of the drug substance, uh, in the application form, the manufacturing process description, uh, uh, the different parameters, minor or major, are uh, defined graphically by different parentheses, as you can see here. Uh, when uh, submitting a new generic drug. Uh, uh, there are two uh, terms per year that uh, this can be done in February and August, and the master file should be submitted prior to, to the pharma uh, submission. Dur uh, the approval of uh, authorization is usually takes about 12 months, and the review starts about two months after the submission by the customer. Uh, the first submission should include application form and module two in Japanese, the drug master filed module three in English, parameters list and flow chart of the process. Uh, when submitting uh, the existing approved file for the new customer in Japan, there is no time limitation, it means that uh, uh, during the whole year this can be submitted. Approval is expected uh, during nine months and the review also starts about two months after the submission of the customer. In this case, we submit application form in module two in Japanese and uh, DMF in English. What is important uh, is that uh, if there are, uh, before submission of the, new cust of the new customer of existing file, we usually confirm con consistency of the application form with the batch records. And if there is a, any gap found, this should be resolved prior to the submission of the customer, meaning a change should be submitted. Um, as I said, uh, uh, the, besides uh, a master file uh, review, PMD also performs uh, a GMP inspection during the submission and also uh, when any new customer is submitted. Uh, submitting uh, our drug master file. Uh, this JMP uh, uh, documents should be ready by the time of the submission, meaning that they should be translated to English and uh, drug master file and application form should be cross-checked with the JMP uh, documents on site. Uh, we also committed to submit, uh, to perform this JMP inspection every five year. Uh, and in case uh, any gap or discrepancy is found, uh, a change should be submitted. Uh, in uh, recent years, the changes submissions uh, became uh, more manageable because we can uh, go to PMDA for consultations. There are two types of consultation, simple consultation or special consultation, depending on the complexity of the change that we want to submit. These are both prepaid services provided by PMDA. A minor change uh, can be implemented immediately, of course, uh, and it should be submitted no later than 30 days after the 
first post-change material is shipped to Japan. In this case, we do not expect any feedback from PMDA, and the review of this change will, will start only if uh, the DMF will be open for any periodical review. Uh, if the change is major, of course, it can be implemented only after approval, and uh, uh, the review starts after customers submit their partial change application. Uh, so this is uh, Japan in a nutshell, and uh, thank you, and back to Tami. Thanks so much to all of you for all your presentations. That's Rodrigo, Anna, Sofit, Jay, and Mariana. Uh, it was a super clear, holistic overview of what's going on in the regulatory market today, so thank you. While you were speaking, we received some questions from people in the audience. So I'm just going to pick a couple now, see what we have time for. Um, so whoever feels whoever feels most appropriate to answer for this specific market or country, please do. Um, OK, so the first question is, how do you handle Anvisa's communications on sufficiency letters coming from Anvisa in the new Kadifa framework? So that's obviously for Rodrigo. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, there's uh, this uh, specificity about uh, Anvisa and uh, how it's dealt uh, mainly related to deficiency letters because Anvisa uses uh, a web system uh, of its own and it's all in Portuguese. So uh, all the deficiency letters that Anvisa issue uh, for APIs under Kazifa framework uh, they are going to send the notification of the deficiency letter to this web system. And differently from other authorities, Anvisa does not send any emails to uh, make the API supplier aware uh, of it. So it means that uh, the API supplier has to be well versed in Anvisa's web, web system and uh, have uh, it's better that uh, has uh, Portuguese understanding. Uh, in order to navigate the system and uh, also uh, to have the uh, uh, the habit of uh, consulting it regularly uh, since it uh, doesn't have any other type of uh, notification. Uh, and uh, we are able to provide uh, all of it uh, because uh, we have a team uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and uh, we are uh, well versed in the system and have uh, the experience to navigate it. And also we have uh, uh, standard procedures to check it regularly. Uh, so uh, we can make sure uh, that uh, deficiency letters are uh, uh, replied to in a timely manner. Great, thank you, Rodrigo. Um, so the next question is, how does the DMF review enhancements under GADUFA 3 impact the ANDA assessment process and approvals? Mm. So I guess... Mm. Anna, okay, thanks. Yes, you. yes, I, I will take it. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, well, actually, I would say that both those of the DMF review enhancements I talked about uh, uh, are designed to optimize the end assessment uh, cycle and enable that more ENDAs are approved within the first cycle. This is the main point. Because as you probably know, in order for ENDA to be approved uh, within the GDUFA goal date, also DMF must be found adequate at that time. Um, and the problem is, and this is what FDA is seeing in their statistics, that only a small number of DMFs are found adequate after the first cycle review, and also less than a half of the DMF responses are found adequate. So by this review, uh, DMF review enhancement, those DMF responses will be reviewed immediately. Uh, which is actually uh, giving FDA more time for assess, but also what is important, the DMF holder enough time to address any potential follow-up information requests and all within the one uh, first uh, end review cycle. So it definitely increases this option uh, to have DMF in adequate state within the end of first review cycle. Um, Regarding this second update and this option of DMF review prior to ENDA, uh, uh, so obviously it gives the DMF a longer review clock and by that uh, end assessment cycle is more efficient and can result in more uh, ENDA first cycle approvals. Um, maybe potential, let's say, problem with this is that 
FDA is giving uh, um, a relatively narrow window for which drugs it can apply. So it's not to be used for all DMFs in general, but in case the uh, where the conditions are met, this is for sure useful option and can uh, benefit uh, end approval process and make sure that tenders are approved faster. Okay, thank you very much, Anna. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm afraid mm -hmm. that's all we have time for today in terms of questions. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, because if we didn't get to your question, as always, our experts will be answering all the ones we didn't get to, and you'll receive a personal answer by email in the next few days. And of course, if you'd like any more information about our products or services, feel free to reach out to us by email or through our website. And also for more great content, like blogs, podcasts, and previous webinars, all the content is on our website. So that's teva-api.com. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again in the next Teva API webinar. Bye.